Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will be looking at the finite element analysis of buckling in a column. Uh, basically we will be checking out the results from the hand calculations of the simple Euler buckling analysis of a pin-ended pin -ended column. So we will check the buckling mode shapes and find the critical buckling compressive load on the column. So in this particular example, to we'll take column as uh, an I section, which is a universal column 203, 203 by 60. And the material of the column will be steel grade S355 as per Eurocode. Height of the column will be 5 meters. And for initializing the buckling analysis, we'll consider the applied vertical load on the column is 1000 kilonewton. So based on this applied load, we'll calculate what additional critical load factor should be multiplied with the vertical load such that the column buckles. Now, why we're interested in the buckling analysis is that we know that strength and uh, stiffness, these are the two parameters, very important parameters for the design of the structure. But for slender members, we also need to check the stability of the member. So the stability of the member is checked by performing a buckling analysis. What happens is under a compressive load, a slender element or member tends to buckle before reaching its yield point or before actually reaching the ultimate um, strength, uh, stress. So it starts uh, to f fail in the buckling mode. So we'll see how the buckling, different buckling modes occur in the, uh, in the structure through the software. And we'll take a simple example of a column for this. In this figure, you will see that there are three buckling modes displayed. So the theoretical formula for buckling analysis is P critical is equal to pi square EI upon L square, where EI is the stiffness of the structure, and L is the uh, length of the element. And as you go on increasing the number of modes, the critical force required to make the uh, or buckle the structure um, is incremented by um, n square multiplied by n square so for mode number two it will be increased by four times and mode number three it will be increased by nine times and so on so let's go to the software now and I'll go to a new project that's a new project file and again set the um, we'll set the project uh, parameters as uh, two-dimensional. So change it to exit plane. Click OK. Make sure units are clean in 10 meters. Then we go to base structure, column, and enter the uh, the height of the column. So for the buckling analysis in a finite element software, we need to break the member into several uh, small finite elements so that the buckling analysis is more accurate. So instead of taking one member which is 5 meter high, we will take, we'll divide it into 10 parts and uh, we'll create um, members, uh, small elements which are 0.5 meters in length and repeat it 10 times. So that's how it will look and since it's it's pinned at the base and we have a ruler at the top so initially we'll just uh, we'll pin it at the base so select pin materials and sections we'll just enter some default material and sections say one and one and click OK so that's the column section here I'll just shift to the front view by clicking on this button and go to the works tree we can see the different information in the model right click on the supports display so we have a support condition here now the next thing is applying a support condition at the top so we go to boundaries define supports and select the top node and specify a constraint in the x direction which is in the horizontal direction that's dx the column is the column top is allowed to roll vertically so we'll free the dz will not constrain it so that's only dx is constrained apply then we will apply the properties for this uh, structure for this uh, column 
so we go to properties material properties add and select steel select s355 which is uh, yield strength of the steel is 355 megapascal in this case click ok then uh, select section properties go to add and we will be, we'll be using an I section and it will take that I section from British Standard BS 493 and um, we can select the dimensions of the I section as universal column 203 times 203 times 60 the properties for this particular section we can identify from here from the section properties area moment of inertias so close this and click OK and close and now we will define an initial load on top of the column a compressive load so we go to loads define a name for the load the static load case P type is user defined add and then we select nodal loads enter a value of minus 1000 kilonewton at the top of the column select the node at the top and click apply so a compressive load is applied to the top of the column of 1000 kilonewtons and after the analysis the software will uh, the finite element analysis will tell us that what factor should be multiplied with this initial load such that the column buckles so close this and now we will enter the analysis controls and select buckling and enter the number of modes that we want to uh, generate the output for so select five modes for instance so five buckling modes and here select consider actual force only so only the actual buckling will be considered we have different types of buckling like the actual buckling then we have the torsion buckling where the um, where the column twists due to due to the applied loading we also have um, lateral torsion buckling where due to the applied compressive force the uh, the buckling is uh, is in the uh, lateral direction so yes yeah, so we select load case p add it here and click okay so after having defined all those uh, features I'll display this we run the analysis so I'll save it so we run the analysis and after the analysis is completed we can look at the different buckling mode shapes so we go to results and select mode shapes buckling mode shapes and check say undeformed legend and the contours and click apply so that's the buckling mode shape one okay so it gives you a factor critical load factor in the legend you can see it gives a factor of 4.9 which is approximately 5 uh, so and a load of 5000 kilonewton will buckle the column in this manner so in the first mode of buckling this is the most critical uh, lo uh, mode of buckling mode 2 it buckles in this way and you can see the buckling load factor is uh, almost equal to 18 so 18 times so you can figure out if for the second mode it should be n square times the first mode so the first mode was 5 so 5 into 2 square which is approximately two, uh, which is which should give you a near about 20 so it is giving 18 okay and then mode 3 where the column will buckle in this manner we can also see um, the, in the buckling mode shapes uh, all at the same time by clicking on multi modes select the three modes tile them vertically and there you go you have the modes and I'll just change them to the hidden view so that's how they look when you compare the, all of them at the same time so let's see what the uh, what the hand calculation suggests 
So I'll take you back to the PDF file. Okay, so based on the theoretical formula, we have the P critical or the critical buckling load as pi square into E i upon L square. And we can take the, uh, we, we have defined the E from the, or the elasticity from the material that we selected, which was steel 355 grade. And I is the moment of inertia, of, uh, which we obtain, uh, which we can obtain from the section properties for the I section. And then we, uh, the length is 5 meters and we you put them in this formula and gives us the f actual buckling load to be 5000 kilonewton. So, the, which is fairly similar to what we get from Midas uh, Civil. So, hence we can uh, see that how the buckling analysis takes place in the software and how we get different buckling modes, the correlation with the hand calculations. So thank you for watching this video. For other videos on frame analysis, stay tuned to our Midas UK YouTube page. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Bye.